This is KGW News at Sunrise. All right, take a look at this guy on your screen. Police in Clark County say he's a main suspect in multiple home burglaries. I talked with a homeowner who saw him at her house on camera minutes before a window was smashed. And a man is in jail this morning after investigators say he broke into a home and barricaded himself inside. That led to a seven and a half hour standoff with law enforcement. How a SWAT team finally managed to get him out of the house coming up in just a few minutes. Also, Mother's Day is this Sunday, but why wait two more days to give mom the love she deserves? We're sharing Mother's Day shout outs this morning on Sunrise. You can chime in by replying to this post on our KGW Facebook page. Simply asked, why is your mom awesome? Your answers coming up. So Mother's Day is this Sunday. I'll tell you why Rod's forecast is awesome. It's like a fantastic roller coaster ride. Yeah. What goes up? We're going up. Must yeah. come down. Whoa! I've lowered Sunday's forecast to 78. I had it at what, 81. And um, we'll see. That'd be really comfortable. That's a Mother's Day special. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the entire weekend looks sunny here in the Inland Valley. Here's a look outside right now at the uh, bricks from the Pioneer Courthouse Square camera. The bricks will be toasty warm later today. Right now, though, 54 degrees. So yesterday we hit the forecast high of 83, becoming the first 80 degree day of the year so far. Today, 77. And obviously, if we make it to 90, I'm not sure if we will, but we may. If we do, it will become not only the first 90 degree day of the year, but it would also be a new record high. Today's record is 89. Here's Chris and sunny and Friday light out there as in light volume and it's getting light. See a little play on words there. Uh, 84 westbound out near 82nd Avenue looks good. This is I-5 near Capitol Highway. The headlights here. Uh, that's the southbound I-5 drive. That looks pretty wide open and a quick check of the drive over the interstate bridge out of Clark County. Wide open guys, lots of elbow room, no crashes, no unexpected freeway delays just yet. All right, we'll have more from Chris and Rod here a little bit later. But right now, our top story this hour. The Clark County Sheriff's Office says it's looking for a man who's believed to be responsible for several break-ins. Right, our Devin Haskins joins us now. And Devin, you spoke with a homeowner who says someone broke into their home. Yeah, I did. And she was on vacation in California celebrating her birthday of all days when she watched him come to her house all from her doorbell camera. It wasn't the birthday surprise she wanted. It was 923 in the morning on Tuesday. A man wearing a blue shirt and a hat with a paper in hand walks up to the door and knocks. He then steps back, turns around, and then walks away from the door. He appears to talk with someone in the driveway. We'll speed the video up here because 15 seconds later, he walks back to the door and knocks again. Tanya Cheka wasn't home when she got an alert on her phone. So all she could do was watch it on her doorbell camera of her Salmon Creek home. I looked at the guy, I saw his picture, and I went, you know, eh, okay, it's just somebody here. I didn't think anything of it, you know. The man disappears, and this is where Tanya thinks he went next. Looks like he started with this sliding glass door up here, so I took the uh, crowbar to it. There's damage to the door frame, but he couldn't get in. To that one next. Another door crowbar, was tried marks. before moving downstairs to her back patio window. He was in the house. Don't like that. That's, you know, but he couldn't get into the main house. Cheka and her husband called the Clark County Sheriff's Office, thinking he might still be inside. They watched as deputies show up with a canine in hand. This is the police. Anybody inside, make your presence known now. Police dog will be sent to find you. When he finds you, he will bite you. In the end, the man was no longer there. As Cheka would later find out, she wasn't the only target. Camas police posted these photos on Facebook, saying the man had done the same thing to a house there a day before. Same situation, same clothing. The post says he walked out with an armful of stuff. Most of the time when they'll repeat things like this, it's because they've had some success being able to get something. After breaking into Tanya's house, another house a few blocks away was also broken into. The person was actually home and just didn't answer their door, so she, she confronted this, them and they, they left hastily. Tanya says here. she's already Fairly looking at making her house safer. I, we're going to be upping everything. Law enforcement says he appears to be driving a silver or white colored Hyundai sedan seen here and maybe with a woman that appears to be the same age. All right, so Clark County Sheriff's Office says they believe there's a fourth house that they uh, told me about yesterday that uh, this uh, man was responsible for breaking into as well. Now they didn't have security video, but a back window was also broken and they say a small safe was taken with very little value inside. All three homes were in the Salmon Creek and Philida area in addition to the Camas house. So if you recognize this man, you're asked to call Clark County Sheriff's Office or the Camas Police.
Yeah, True. some of that doorbell video is wild, Devin. Thanks for that update this morning. With that, we want to get to some of this morning's other local headlines. We start in East Multnomah County, where a standoff finally came to an end after seven and a half hours. Right. A man was arrested after investigators say he broke into a home and barricaded himself inside for several hours. It all started at a home on Bridge Street, just off 223rd Avenue in Fairview. The homeowner called 911 around 3.30 yesterday afternoon, saying a man was trying to break in. People inside the home got out and Multnomah County Sheriff's deputies set up a perimeter. A SWAT team surrounded the home after deputies heard the man could have had access to weapons. Around 11 o'clock last night, a search warrant allowed the SWAT team to enter the home. The man was arrested and is in jail. No one was hurt. Police in Salem arrested a man who they say attacked a stranger with a pistol. This happened yesterday afternoon on Northeast Court and High Streets, right near the Marion County Circuit Court. Police say 21-year-old Enrique Hatfield tried to get on a bus, then started shouting threats. Witnesses on the bus say he later pulled out a gun, actually pointed it at someone, and then hit a woman in the face with the gun before knocking her to the ground and kicking her. That woman was treated at the scene. And a woman is facing multiple charges, including arson, after a Portland police say she used a knife to dent and damage two cars. She's also accused of setting a parked car on fire. It happened near Southwest Barber Boulevard at 26th just after noon yesterday. No one was hurt. Police say they think the woman was having a mental health crisis. She was also, or she was arrested rather, and also faces other charges, including criminal mischief and menacing. A fire broke out at the Schnitzer Steel Facility in North Portland. Portland Fire shared these photos from the incident. They say the flames burned a debris pile of combustible mixed metals, including things like shredded cars and all the stuff inside those shredded cars. Crews say there were no reports of any injuries. All right, before we get to Rodney Hill and his hot Friday forecast, uh, we also talked to a health officer with Multnomah County about preparations for this warmer weather. The county says it will decide later today if cooling centers will open over the weekend. The health officer we spoke to also gave us some warning signs of heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion can be simply having excessive sweating. Some people may have rapid heartbeat or shallow breathing. They may get muscle aches or nausea or vomiting. We want to make sure you get people hydrated and in the shade pretty quickly if they start exhibiting any signs of heat exhaustion. As the doctor just mentioned, it is worth repeating hydration, still the best weapon to fight off potential heat exhaustion. Yeah, interesting that we're definitely talking about 90 degree weather today, potentially, yeah. right? My big story is I, I don't think that's going to be necessary, but mm -hmm. I'm not the one that makes those decisions. Right. I've got a 78 degrees on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I think there's a better bet that we're only mid 80s tomorrow than 90. Mm. And today I'm not sure if we make 90. So we may not even say a hot weekend. We're talking about a hot Friday. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely right. Here's a look at what I do think is a super cool story. And that is the uh, forecast with clear skies here locally for the potential to see the northern lights. Talking tonight and tomorrow. Now, this is the forecast projection area. The likelihood in, in red is uh, all the way down to the Canadian border, uh, U.S. border, if I'm talking dropping south. But there's a decent shot up in Washington. So if you're going up to Seattle, for example, the farther north you travel, the better the chances of seeing this. And there is at least the chance given here in the extreme northern slice of our state of uh, Oregon. So um, maybe we get to see some of this. You can read more. It's an easy website to remember spaceweather.gov. So, um, you know, we've had sightings out in North Plains over the years uh, to name one location. So we could get lucky. All right, let's talk about what's going on weather wise. We're still all dry, very sunny weekend coming up for all areas all the time, except for the coast, which I'll get to. We have the upper level ridge moved in and here is the coast forecast. All sunny today. East winds picked up. They were gusty along the river yesterday at about 37 miles per hour. We had the uh, video uh, uh, covering the first lady's arrival out uh, at uh, PDX and holy cow, you could see it was windy. Anyway, 76 to 84 today at the beach, all sunny, all warm. Tomorrow still really nice, sunny skies, a little bit cooler, more of a westerly prevailing wind flow tomorrow, 67 to 75. And then by Mother's Day, it still looks like we wake up most of the coast to be under clouds, fog, maybe some mist, 59 to 64 degrees. Probably a mixed bag in the afternoon of some areas clearing and some areas not.
That would be Sunday afternoon for Mother's Day. Here's where we stand right now under clear skies all area. Astoria, good morning. 56 is your number. Kelso 48, the Dow's 49, Ben's at 45. We've got uh, low 40s out in Baker City, John Day and Burns all clear up into Seattle where it's 54. Here's the Futurecast movie, which doesn't show much, and I guess that's the point. This is this afternoon at 530. We're all sunny. The low clouds well out to sea tomorrow. Closer to being at the coast, um, I meant to say the low clouds out to sea today, closer to being along the beach tomorrow. This is Saturday at 530. And then a couple things to note as we go into Sunday. Number one, you can see the uh, low clouds moving inland across Washington and Oregon. Maybe even some low clouds up in Cowlitz County to start your Sunday. Then those should back off. There is the chance of some widely scattered showers and maybe some lightning out across eastern Oregon developing Mother's Day afternoon. Here's Portland. 90 today. I'm not sure if we make it or not. Tomorrow, 88 or cooler. 78 on Sunday. Low 70s to start next week and all dry into Thursday. And that is your update. Love